on the show, Barry. It, it's, Thanks for having me, Matt. It's, it's um, I know you're a busy man with uh, your uh, your important stuff that you're doing there. <laughs> you're right, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Uh, even even more important now that you have a a little boy. How old is he now? I do. He's two months. His name is Knox. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Right, where's let's see the hands. You got poop on your hands. I do not have poop no, on my hands. No, poop on your hands. Hands. no, not yet. It must not have been your hour to change the diaper. No, it's not been my hour. You're right, next uh, uh, <laughs> So, so everyone knows the legend of Barrett. Even even people who have never even seen you, they it's true. Uh, <laughs> they, they it, you're kind of like the Loch Ness monster of Airsoft Louisville. Actually, we've actually gone to games. Yeah. In other states before, people are like, you're Barrett? I'm like, fuck me. <laughs> well, I'm not playing anymore. I wore the wrong yeah. camo. <laughs> I did that you knifed five people with a Sharpie <laughs> and threw a magazine at somebody and then... From three counties away. The magazine and lit somebody on fire and then pooped on his chest or something like that. And I'm like, uh, yeah, that was me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The, uh, the Airsoft world is, is lucky that you're uh, more... Importantly, inner or uh, contained to uh, to the the outskirts of Indiana. One or two somewhere. games a year. <laughs> yeah. So, so how did you first hear about airsoft and airsoft Louisville? Well, I think uh, my first experience with airsoft was a friend from college. His name is Jeremy Cabin. He said, "You gotta you gotta check out this sport. Have you ever played paintball?" And I said, "Yeah, but I didn't like it." He's like, "This is so much better." He showed me a gun in the school's parking lot, which was uh, against the rules to do. And we were shooting this gun, and it was just like, it was awesome. It was just, just this little uh, M4 Classic Army, and he had this red dot on it. And, man, wherever you put that red dot, that BB was going. I was like, this is so cool. And he's like, yeah, the best part of it, you get to shoot people. I'm like, really? And so he shot me. I took a couple hits. I was like, man, this is awesome. And so I started looking for games in Louisville because that's where I was living at the time. I was living in Louisville, and I was going to school in Cincinnati. So uh, during the summer, I was uh, trying to get hooked up with, a, uh, you know, just people who played. So I got on Airsoft Global Forums. Uh, I think that's where I got, got in contact with you, Matt. And they we went out to they... play a game. It was a small little game. And that was it. Uh, I think that I met you at a McDonald's with you and Crazy Uncle Kevin, which was by <laughs> far the scariest experience I think I've ever had in my life. Uh... Uh, you were all dressed in uh, camo, and I was, I can't remember what I was dressed in, but I, I, I didn't know that that was going to be my first Airsoft Louisville experience. And I remember. I was so glad that it happened because, you know, you've just been a lifelong friend of me, and that's just an awesome experience. I remember you had. That's how I got started with that. I remember you had an afro at the time. I did. I had, I was, I think it's up here. And. <laughs> I, I can't remember what your first thoughts of me were, but uh, I, I thought I was going to be great. <laughs> I really did. <laughs> uh, you, you definitely are the kind of person that uh, the first impression is, God, I cannot stand this guy. He's so arrogant and loud yeah. and annoying. But once you get to know Barrett, he is the best friend you could ever want. I, I've, I've been told it several times. Like, I'm sorry <laughs> it's my personality, but, I mean, even Sam... Uh, from Airsoft Louisville, well, Sam and I have gotten into it before, and we didn't even know each other. And I, I've thoroughly come. I mean, I, like one of the only screaming matches I've ever had with a person on uh, on the field was with Sam yeah. and uh, uh, Sam Hughes. I think it is this is his last name, right? Sam yeah. Hughes. No, it's actually Sam Tate now. <laughs> he got married. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, but no, we you know, we turned out to be great friends, and uh, uh, you know, so you just can't judge friendship yeah. just based off of that first thing. Anyway, that's for sure. <laughs> so what, what would you you've been playing for on and off for what, what six seven years probably? I have played since uh, two thousand <coughs> two thousand seven no two thousand six two thousand six was my sophomore year of uh, college. And uh, 2006, so that's been uh, seven years now, okay. something like that. So, what, what's your most memorable moment playing airsoft? Oh God, uh, there's a lot of them. I, I think I would think one state, one would involve a hill in Ohio. It would. It would. <laughs> we went to. A, I, I, what, what was the game we went to? Yeah, I think it was one of the Blind Fury games. We went to a Blind Fury game. It was me and you, and that was it. 
Uh, we had some guys off to our right that we didn't know who they were. We were in this huge open field. It must have been 150 yards all the way around this field. No cover at all, just high grass. And there was this huge 15-foot hill, this dirt hill in the middle. And a saw gunner was sitting on top of it. And there was no way anybody was getting through this. There must have been 30 minutes this saw gunner was holding off everybody. Cheeto and I took the hill with a single Glock magazine that I handed to him because his gun was down. I handed him my Glock. There was like 17 rounds in this Glock magazine. And then I had a single M4 mag. Not only did we take out the saw gunner, but we also took out the 25 people <laughs> hiding behind the hill. I remember it very vividly. We went up. This saw gunner, we, we, we got him. We started, we started pressing real hard. And this saw gunner, I remember, he's sitting on the hill. And he's like, uh, guys? <laughs> We emptied everything that we could at these guys, and uh, sure enough, I think I don't know if we killed them all, but we we took the hill, and everybody else followed up behind us, and that was one of them. I think another one was um, Stillwater, where you and I, where again you and I, uh, we had uh, I had a scar that kept breaking all day, and you had something else. Oh, I had the 416 that kept breaking all day, but I had a scar then. We made our way up a right-hand side flank, and we walked throughout this trench that people were holding. And I think we killed some. I think we killed some 40 guys. Uh, that's no exaggeration. We walked, and we were unloading magazine after magazine, just nice, just nice and steady, just walking along, just just taking out guys. And I think those are my two most memorable airsoft that, moments. That was the same game that they asked us to stop so they could restart the game because we finished it in like 20 minutes, wasn't it? <laughs> that was. I think that was that game. And uh, <clears throat> I don't know if that speaks to our arrogance as players or if that speaks to just people, a lack of organization. But people, back then, I think uh, events weren't as, as organized as they are today. So pe People just weren't that good back then, I think. I think that's something else, too. I think that, yeah, I think yeah. the people Nobody, just weren't that Nobody wore helmets back then. So. Yeah, exactly. Nobody, nobody wore GoPro cams. Yeah, yeah. Things like that. So. so, so if you could give one tip to someone just starting out in airsoft, what would that be? Oh man, I I don't know if I can just give one tip. I think the first tip I could ever give to the authenticity of gameplay and to have fun with playing airsoft is to simply call your hits. Um, that's, I mean, that's it. I mean, that's what makes the game fun. And you will get to a point where airsoft becomes bored because you've played every single type of scenario, you've done everything, you've rescued VIPs, you've done this, and you'll have stories out the wazoo to tell, but really what comes down to it is if, if, if you're if you're actively and knowingly cheating and you've got this force field that nobody else can do, the game doesn't become fun anymore. It's not challenging. So I'd say the first thing you do is call your hits. And other players will recognize that too. Other players take note of that integrity. And that speaks a lot about who you are and whether or not people like you. People don't like you because you're good at the game. Uh, people aren't going to like you or think that you're cool because you've got gear. People are going to like you and think that you're cool based off of the conversations that you have and the relationships that you build with people simply because whether or not you cheat actively and knowingly cheat or whether or not you are a solid player and you call your hits. So that's the first, I think that's the, and as, as, to, as far as enjoying airsoft, that's the first thing. The second thing I, I could possibly say is if, if, if you really are looking to get into airsoft, uh, you don't have to gear whore up, you don't have to spend a lot of money, uh, you don't have to have the most out, tricked out awesome gun. You don't have to spend money like that. You don't have to wear a vest or, 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 you know, get into that, although there is certain elements of the game that are awesome when you do that. The most important thing, in all honesty, is just don't spend a lot of money on stuff. You can spend it if you want to on a hobby and things like that, but um, as, as it's your hobby, but you don't have to spend a, a lot of money to be a good player. I think, I think my best gun I ever played with was the first gun I ever bought. It was an ICS M4. I didn't touch that gun. Uh, you know, after Matt told me, don't even do anything to it. I think the only thing I did to it was put a typo in it. Uh, and even that takes away from the authenticity of gameplay because even if you uh, if you shoot real steel, you know that that gun kicks and moves around. It doesn't stay on target. So if you're shooting, you know, out of a stock barrel and stock everything else, you're you're actually getting a little bit more authenticity into the sport than what you would 
originally be thinking of. Although type 4 barrels do help, and I, I, I'll say go ahead and get one of those because they help. But you don't have to touch your gun to be a good player. You don't have to be shooting over 300 feet per second to be a good player. A lot of people think you do, you don't. Uh, it's just, uh, it's just that's not that's not a reality to the sport. People think it is. Oh well, the faster the baby moves, more true. No, it doesn't. It's it, that doesn't have anything to do with it. What has something to do with it is a little bit of wit and intuition and being able to move and have a good piece of cover, move up and communicate with teammates. That's what it's all about. It's not about how hot that gets uh, shooting. So, I think those are my two, my two big ones. That's what I have to say. We we've all seen you get multiple kills using nothing but a bottle opener. So yeah. <laughs> put a, you don't even need a gun if you bear it. Exactly. So. You don't. It, that's that's one thing. You, if, if you don't have to, you could be using a stick in this game if that's what if that's what's fun to you. You could be using a pump shotgun if that's what's fun to you. I think that there are certain. Okay, let me. Okay, I gotta stop here. Well, okay, let me say something. Couple things. I think that there are certain things that uh, when you go to other games and when you go to other games in other states and other games that people are hosting, I think it's important to represent your team and the organization that you're with. So whenever I went to Airsoft, or whenever I represented Airsoft Louisville, a couple things you always want to do, especially when you're up in AFL, is you always want to call your hits, and you always want to be the best team there. I mean, that's <laughs> you're really. Uh, we, 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 we want to have people say, wow, these guys were good, and they were honest. Uh, you know, and, and things like that. So that's, I think, that's the, the biggest point. So if you if you go out to a game, yeah, don't bring a pump shotgun. Uh, if you're repping the airsoft Louisville, you know, bring what it is that you would want to dominate the field with. But if you're just doing home games and things like that, and you're trying to get better. Challenge yourself. You know, uh, just pick up a pump shotgun, pick up a pistol, walk around with a knife uh, and a couple smoke grenades. <laughs> I've seen that before. I've, uh, I've, I've actually done that, believe it or not. I've actually gotten, I think, three kills in a house because I threw a smoke grenade into the house from, like, 100 yards away. No joke. And they, like, smoked them out. They came out coughing and throwing up. That was hilarious. Uh, but, uh, yeah, just make the, make, make the game challenging. If, for whatever reason, you have a physical handicap and you're not as quick or as fast or something like that, make up for it by shooting lots of volume down. If you like to sneak around, use a sniper rifle. God knows we need more snipers. Yeah. Uh, we need more people in ghillie suits. That's hilarious. Yeah. I love that stuff. Um, people who go around in ghillie suits, we can see you. But at the same time, if, that's, if that is the target that you wish to paint on yourself because you want to make this game more of a challenge, knock your, that's awesome. And more power to you. Um, so I mean, make the make the game fun, and the game is supposed to be fun. But but just know that you know people are wearing gear, and they can't oftentimes they can't feel their hits that they get. Uh, don't call other people out, and call yourself out. Uh, I mean, that's really those are the biggest elements to airsoft. That's what makes the game fun. So. Yeah. Well, man, I I really appreciate you taking the time to uh, sit down and chat with me today. Sure. I'm sure uh, you put a put a face to the the legendary name here for a lot of people. <laughs> but uh, okay, yeah, thanks for thanks for talking to me, and uh, I guess we'll see you later on. All right, sure. Thank Might you. Might be done sometime. Alrighty.